The Chizkuni's understanding of Rashi is problematic on three counts. According to the Chizkuni, Rashi's interpretation of Shabbat la Hashem as L'Shem Hashem comes to emphasize that the mitzvah of Shemitah must be kept irrespective of the farmer's need to replenish the soil. That the year of Shemitah is a Shabbat la Hashem, it's a mitzvah that must be done because it has been commanded from God, independent of other benefits that might accrue from allowing the land to be fallow. Rashi then goes on to support this interpretation through a word association between Vayikra 25.2, Shemitah obligations, and Shemot 20.10 in the Aseret Hadibrot that irrespective of the individual's need to replenish the body through a cessation of work, Shabbat la Hashem elokecha, the laws of Shabbat must nevertheless be observed. Worth noting is the fact that Rashi has nothing to comment upon in Shmot 2010, implying that the default understanding of Shabbat la Hashem elokecha is that the obligations of Shabbat relate to God rather than the rationalization that it relates to man. Which brings us to the first of the three problems, that if Rashi felt there was no need to define the expression Shabbat la Hashem elokecha as la Shem Hashem in the Aseret Hadibrot, why does he feel the need to provide that definition in Vayika regarding the laws of Shemitah? Problem number two, after defining Shabbat la Hashem as L'Shem Hashem, Rashi then goes on to provide us with a textual basis, namely the link between Shabbat and Shemitah. In the words of Rashi, Kashem Shene'emar B'Shabbat Bereshit. The concept of linking a mitzvah to God rather than to man is mentioned two times prior to Vayikra. The first in Shmot 31.15, once again regarding Shabbat, the Pasuk states, Ubayom HaShvi'i Shabbat Shabbaton Kodesh LaHashem. And Rashi interprets Kodesh LaHashem as Shmirat Kedushata, Lishmi, the purpose of observing the Kedusha of Shabbat is for my name, in other words for me, Uba Mitzvotai, and for the fulfillment of my mitzvot. Note that in this instance, no textual basis is provided by Rashi. A second instance is to be found in Shmot 25 regarding the collection of raw material for the building of the Mishkan. Daber el b'nei Yisrael, God tells Moshe, V'yikhon li truma, to which Rashi comments, Li lishmi, li for me, lishmi for my name, however one understands this phrase. And once again, no textual basis is provided by Rashi for his commentary and definition of the word Li. Based upon another of the Rebbe's rules regarding the commentary of Rashi that no superfluous information is included by Rashi in his commentary, one may ask that in light of the two previous instances where Rashi does define and comment that the mitzvah must be done for God, as opposed to it being fulfilled for the benefit of man, where in the two instances no textual basis is provided, why is there a need with respect to the commentary in Vayikra to provide the textual basis, namely the link between Shemitah and Shabbat? And finally, a third rule that the Rebbe has, and that is that the headings must match the commentary. The commentary is L'Shem Hashem. In other words, Rashi is interpreting the L'Hashem component of this Pasuk. And as such, the inclusion of the word Shabbat into the heading was unnecessary. Problem 3 asks, why has Rashi, as understood by the Chizkuni, included the word Shabbat into the heading?